All right, this is section three. Remember section two is called patterns in linear functions. Now we're talking about nonlinear. Students will be able to identify and represent patterns that describe nonlinear functions. A nonlinear function is a function whose graph is not a line. I'm gonna add a word here. Graph is not a straight line. Okay. A graph whose function is not a straight line, a line or part of a line. Okay, let's look at some possible answers. So the linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line or part of a non-vertical line. So we've got all of these. These are all make straight lines. Okay, a non-linear function. Notice it's still a function. Okay, we're still talking about things that are functions, meaning for each input there's exactly a, one exact output whose graph is not a line, you see curved, curved, a big V, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, pretty obvious to tell the difference between the linear function and the nonlinear function. If we only had these dots and there was nothing over here, we'd be talking about a linear function because it's part of it. If it were these dots, it would be a linear function. But since it's the combination of the two, it is not. A linear function. It doesn't have to be a curved line. It can still be straight. It just has to be uh, not a continuous line. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're graphing. Um, we've got the left hand side. We've got the, the area of a pizza is a function of its radius. So as the radius gets bigger, the area gets bigger. And over here we've got the cost of the sauce. The cost of the sauce in dollars is a function of the weight. So the more ounces of spaghetti sauce we use, the more we pay. Okay. What they want you to do is they want you to graph both of these equations. So we're going to graph this one right here. Notice I put the arrows on both sides. Okay. Some of you are forgetting to do that on a thing like called a, a little thing called a quiz. Uh, here. This is the x value, and this is the y value. So I'm going to mark that just so I can show it. This is x, and this is y. So I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so I'm counting by 2s, trying to keep this on the screen. Okay, and then I'm going to count by, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to kind of draw this out, because it's just going to make it easier on us. Um, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. So I have to continue this up. Okay, so now I'm going to graph 2 comma 12. So that's like right here. Oops. 2 comma 12. Aye. Stupid thing. I'm trying to draw a point. Stop it. Uh, 4 comma 50, that would be right there. Uh, 6 comma 113, so that would be a little bit, this stinks. Okay, uh, 8 comma 200, so this would be 200 right here. And then 10 comma 314, so 100, 200. 300 to 314 would be around right there. Now, if you notice, it's not a straight line. It's going to be because zero, zero. So it's going to look like this. Okay. So this is nonlinear. Okay. This is a nonlinear function because it's curved. Then we have over here, so I'm going to do. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And I'm going to count by ones. One, two, three, four. Obviously, I would label these. I would need to have a label over here. This is A. This is R. I would have a label over here of C. I would actually write down what it means. And this is W. Okay. So two. Oops, sorry. Red. Two eighty. Four one sixty. 
6 240. 8 through 20. And 10 4. Like straight line. So this one is linear. Right? Alright. Uh, I'm going to let you practice this one. Uh, graph this and see whether it's linear or nonlinear. And will the area in part A ever reach zero? Okay, tell me why. Okay, uh, these are a bunch of points, and our job is to determine what would be the rule that represents that information. If I'm given those points, what would be the rule? So I'm going to make a chart out of it. I've got my x value, I've got my y value, one, two, three, four, five. I've got two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Okay. So uh, using one and two, we're noticing that this is being multiplied by two each time. Okay. So I'm not going to have something like this times this plus this. Uh, what I end up getting, and we can talk more about this in class, uh, the rule would be y is equal to 2x plus 2x, or y is equal to x plus 1, or y is equal to 2 to the power of x. If we had 2 for y, y is equal to 2 times x. But that only works for this one, that one, sorry, it works for that one as well, but then it stops working once we get up here. Um, or it could be y is equal to x plus 1, but that doesn't work for these ones down here. Or it could be y is equal to 2 to the power of x. And all of that helps us get the first value. 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2. So if we notice that that one works for the second one, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So the answer would be y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So there's a little bit of a better explanation in your textbook um, on that. Uh, but they're going to give you a set of ordered pairs, and they're going to ask you to determine what the function is. Okay. All right, last slide. Here are a couple of problems for you to practice. Uh, graphing, one of them that asks you to come up with a rule. Uh, and then here is a table which rule of these works. Right? Uh, that's section three. This is the last video you have to watch until you come back from October break. Remember, uh, the Monday of October break, sorry, the, the 27th, you will have a video to watch for the 28th. So be sure that you're paying attention to that. So on the 27th, okay, on the 27th, check Edmodo. It might be up there earlier, but at least on the 27th, check Edmodo because you're going to do section four. Right. So that's just a reminder. I uh, hope you guys have a, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya.